Hi, my name is Amit Kvaryahu. I teach at Trisha in the July Collegiate Program and in the Dr. Beth Samuels High School Program. This week in Parshat Balak, if you go to your friendly neighborhood synagogue, you will be able to hear many sermons about Bil'am, the prophet of the Gentiles, and about um, Bil'am, Bil'am's famous prophecy about the tents of the Israelites that were appointed at each other, and about the evil king Balak, and of course about the episode at Shittim. I would like to focus on a small vignette, a few lines that we usually love and just sort of skip over in one of Bil'am's prophecies about the nations. Bil'am's last prophecy is about the end of days. He says to Balak, Now, I am going back to my people. Let me inform you of what this people will do to your people in days to come. He took up his theme, Vayisa Mishalo, and said, Word of Balaam, son of Beor, word of the man whose eye is true, stum high, word of him who hears God's speech, who obtains knowledge from the Most High, etc., etc. He has a prophecy about Moab, but does not finish there. He goes on to speak of two other nations, Amalek and Cainim. He saw Amalek, and taking up his theme, he said, A leading nation is Amalek, but its fate is to perish forever. He saw the Kenites, and taking up his theme, he said, Though your abode be secure, and your nest be set among cliffs, yet shall Cain be consumed when Ashur takes you captive. Amalek is treated with less sympathy than the Cainite, though both nations are destined to disappear, as we, from our vantage point in history, know well. Amalek is happily for Bilam going to disappear, whereas the Kani, although its seat is secure, will be one day, sadly, vanquished by Assyria. These two nations, Amalek and Kani, have an interesting history in Tanakh. Amalek are bad. They follow the Israelites in the desert and kill their weaklings and the people who straggle behind. And the mitzvah that we read every year in Parshat Zachor is to kill all the Amalekites. Haman was from Amalek, and we use the name Amalek even today, colloquially, to describe groups and people who we think are particularly hostile to Jews. The Kenites, on the other hand, are related in some traditions to Yitro, the man who gave us our laws and our justice system. Moshe hung out with the Kenites for a while, and the Kenites also furnished one of our biblical heroines, Yael, the wife of Hever Hakeni, who killed the Canaanite general Sisra. To complicate matters further, both peoples live in the desert. They are nomads. And in fact, in one episode, right before Shaul goes to kill Amalekites, he asks the Kenites to separate themselves from the Amalekites, and indeed, the book of Samuel reports, Vayasa hakeni mitoch Amalek. The Kenites left the Amalekites. Really, it seems that both peoples are a form of what we would call today Bedouin. They are nomadic desert, desert dwellers, hunters, gatherers, sometimes marauders, living at the edges of civilized society, trading and stealing as circumstances allow. Though our biblical sources treat them as two distinct separate peoples, it is doubtful whether, when walking along a desert road sometime in the biblical period, any of us could be able to tell the difference between a Kenite and an Amalekite. But as a metaphor for the nomadic lifestyle and for the dangers of society in harsh conditions and their opportunities, the Kenites and the Amalekites are really both sides of the same coin. Desert life offers many opportunities for intergroup solidarity, for taking in those who are in need, for offering a space for communion with the divine without the pressures and the temptations of city life. These are exemplified by the Kenites. However, desert life and the nomadic lifestyle also require a degree of harshness and even often criminality. Life on the fringes of society might be good for some, 
but it is definitely not good for the people who are suffering living on the nearer margins of society. Civilized life is not treated well by the people, the nomads, the robbers, the marauders who live on its edges. They kill, they plunder, they steal. That is Amalek. Really, when the Torah is speaking of Amalekites and Kenites, it is saying, notice, civilizations has its drawbacks. Civilization has its temptations. The desert life is a useful model for you to think about. But beware of adopting desert life in its entirety. Beware of retreating to the desert. Beware of becoming Amalekites. Our critique of contemporary civilization is always done with one eye to what other civilizations might do, but always rooted firmly in the belief that civilization, urban civilization, is really, at the end of the day, the better choice for all of us. Shabbat Shalom.